Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us here today. Uh, today, it's my pleasure to introduce Alex Anthopoulos, Senior Vice President, Baseball Operations and General Manager, and Mr. John Farrell, the new manager of the Toronto Blue Jays. I'd now like to turn it over to Alex Anthopoulos to make some opening comments prior to a question and answer session. Alex? Firstly, I'd like to thank everybody for being here today. Uh, it's a great day for the organization. I want to start off by thanking everybody in the organization that was involved in this process from the ownership group, Dear Mohammed, Keith Pelly, Phil Lynn, Paul Beeston. I really say the entire baseball operations team, and I'd love to name them all, but we'd probably be here a while because I can't stress enough the involvement we had, whether it was training staff, clubhouse staff, front office, scouts, player development, that really helped us in this search, doing a lot of background for us, and I can't thank them enough for the work that led us to this process and to this hiring today. I'd like to thank and welcome Sue Farrell, John's wife, to Toronto. Very excited to have John here and very excited to have your family here as well. And more importantly, very excited to announce John Farrell as the next manager of the Toronto Blue Jays. Put one of these on before, don't worry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, first of all, uh, I'd like to thank Alex. I'd like to thank Paul Beeston um, for this great opportunity. Uh, my wife Sue and I and our family, we, we certainly view this as a tremendous opportunity uh, to join the, the Toronto Blue Jays organization. Uh, I come here um, and share the same vision that Alex and Paul do, and that's to win a World Series. Uh, there is a lot of work to be done, yet the strengths of this ball club, which uh, center around a young pitching staff, a very good starting core, uh, an offense that set records uh, with ho the home run ball, uh, but we also know that uh, there, there is still work uh, that we can become a more complete offense that can take advantages of opportunities that present themselves uh, inside of each and every game. But I'd also like to thank a number of people uh, that have had a huge impact on me being here today. Uh, Terry, uh, if you're listening out there right now, Tito, uh, the last four years standing b beside you has been a tremendous learning experience. Uh, the opportunity that you and Theo, John Henry, Tom Warner, and Larry Lucchino afforded me in Boston uh, is really what's allowed me uh, to make this progression to come here today. Mark Shapiro and Chris Antonetti in Cleveland also share in that same uh, path along the way. Uh, but I think the most important thing is to know that we have a common bond here. Going through this interview process, it became very clear uh, of the direction that this organization is heading, uh, the resources that are available uh, to support a club that is going to compete and compare with New York and Boston in time. Uh, so those were all clear selling points to me. Uh, and so I'm humbled to sit here today and wear this uniform uh, and to be entrusted uh, with the, the team that's going to be assembled by Alex. Uh, and we also know that in this division, uh, it's extremely difficult to compete. It's an extremely challenging division, one in which we're going to have to prepare relentlessly uh, and compete daily uh, to ultimately form an identity that I think our fans will ultimately uh, identify and, and want to be involved in. Uh, having pitched in this ballpark, uh, in the early 90s when it was a sellout every night. The energy that was created here, uh, the atmosphere and the home field advantage that was here, I felt that across the field. We know that we have to earn the trust of our fans, and that is to put a winning product on the field to win and to regain that trust. But I think through that and through the direction of Alex, uh, we can assemble a team to do that. And that's where coming back to the, the vision of winning a World Series uh, is here. Uh, we know that there's a lot of work to do, as I mentioned. But ultimately, if we can compete, as I outlined, 
uh, with, a, with a little bit of a different approach, working off the strengths of the individuals on this roster, uh, we can achieve that. Our goal would be to, to be in the top five in run scored, to be in the top five in Team ERA in the, in the American League. If we're able to achieve that, you know, history shows that those teams contend uh, for a World Series. So that is our goal, that is our driver, uh, and I think we are fortunate to have the direction of Alex to, to put the pieces in place. Uh, I think in the meantime, there's a lot of work to be done, uh, and I'm anxious to get started. I'm anxious to, to grab this uh, situation wholeheartedly uh, and work side by side with Alex uh, to achieve the goal that we set out. So thank you for, for being here today, and uh, this is a great day for my family and I, and I uh, look forward to to forming relationships with you and the media uh, and answer the many questions that I'm sure will come down the line. So it's good to be a Blue Jay. Thank you, John. We will now do question and answer. Please identify yourself when asking your question and who your question is directed towards. Uh, we have wireless mics, so if you could raise your hand and we will get a mic to you to ask your question. First question. Mike Wilner from the Fan 590. John, welcome to Toronto. Uh, I was just wondering how much of this decision, we've heard that you've not been interested in other managerial positions in the past, how much of this has to do with the team that you saw, and especially, you mentioned the young pitching staff, but those young pitchers that you can now have in your stable and, uh, and try to form into a winning rotation? Well, I think it's clear, uh, no matter if it's someone in, on the Red Sox side of the field or, or across the field, what, what's taking place here? A number of guys have had uh, some breakout seasons here, uh, but it's, it, doesn't, it didn't give the impression of a one-year wonder by any means. Uh, you see the youth, the talent that is there in the rotation, as you mentioned. Uh, and there were situations in the past of, of not one thinking I was ready or some other situations that didn't look as attractive uh, as this in Toronto for a lot of reasons. The direction of the organization, the resources available, uh, and what our ultimate goal is to sustain, sustain this, not just to say we did this one year, but to continue to do it year over year. John, Richard Griffin, Toronto Star. Uh, when you said that you were told what resources were available that convinced you to come to Toronto with the Jays, what resources were you told were available, money-wise or talent-wise or moving forward? I think when you uh, have a chance to talk with Alex and talk with Paul, uh, the players that are currently here, uh, the market in which we play in, let, let's not uh, forget that this is, what, the fourth largest market in all of North America. We've got an entire country behind us as an organization, uh, a tremendous owner in Rogers Communications. Uh, I can't say that it was put down with a, an, ex an exact or absolute figure. Uh, but at the right time, and this is where our conversations got very pointed with Alex, is that at the right time there's going to be the ability to, su to support uh, a very strong payroll and one that will allow us to compete at the highest level. James Sabalski from TSN. Alex, for you first off, just how important was the knowledge of the American League East in terms of hiring, John? It was part of it, but the person was more important than anything else. If we just waited our decision on that or put strong emphasis on that, anybody we hired after one year would gain that knowledge as well. It certainly helped just the understanding of the teams that we're competing with, but you know, John's hiring is really about John and the abilities that he brings more than anything else. John, uh, there's, a, there's a feeling that to, to compete in the AL East, sorry, it's Glenn from the SCORE television network, to, to compete in the AL East, you have to spend like the Yankees and the Red Sox. The Rays did it by, you know, building through the draft and eventually taking advantage of their opportunities when they got them. Do you feel that the Jays, that's the way they have to go, or does the payroll have to go up to eventually compete year after year with the big boys? Well, I think you answered your own question. Uh, Tampa has been able to do it on a much uh, lower payroll. Uh, I think the most important thing is how efficient we are as an organization, whether that's through scouting and player development, uh, whether that's through preparing our major league team to compete. Uh, at the right time, uh, there's uh, the ability to sign free agents to support or, or augment the current roster that might be in place. So uh, we know that we're not going to be at the level of New York, per se, uh, but I think at the same time, uh, there's plenty here to compete uh, as long as we make the right decisions and we carry out our organizational vision 
uh, in that dugout and on that big league field. And I 